Hey guys, give us a couple of minutes. We'll get started. All right. Okay. No problem.
Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Essen. I am a homeowner's insurance agent, but I also do flood insurance. And it's perfect timing today. We got the flood flash warnings. So uh, I put together a few things. None of this stuff you have to memorize. It really just goes into all the things I'll do. Whether you got a listing and you want to know if the property is in a flood zone and what the flood rates are, or you're taking the customer on a showing, you don't have to worry about memorizing anything. But um, a lot has happened in the last couple of years. And since flood is becoming so prevalent and almost everywhere, um, uh, you know, I put together, um, uh, you know, I reached out to some of the biggest names in the rap industry. They talked about, you know, making some remix to them. So this is the, um, this is the cover page right here. Right here. <laughs> Get insured or die trying. That's what I will do. You got a property that's hard to insure. It's in a flood zone. Uh, you don't know. Trust me. I, there, I have all the flood carriers in New Jersey. A total of seven different companies. Right? And uh, and don't worry. Nobody was hurt in this. This is actually photoshopped. Uh, so, uh, all right. So, I'm going to go on to the next slide, right? So, um, this is just kind of talking about, this is what the, the album dropping on uh, May 2023. And these are some of the tracks. We got In the Flood, <laughs> with a basement full of mud, oh. featuring fishy scents, <laughs> right? Next one, homeowner, homeowner, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when it floods near you? Right? <laughs> All I need is one multi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like every client. <laughs> yeah. Let me pay my claims. Yeah. Uh, Zim Zimma, who got the number to my FEMA? Yeah. 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 And forgot about Flood featuring Dr. Drench. Yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. So it, it's becoming that prevalent that they all came out and we need to remix these songs. So people know just how crazy it is getting into, uh, you know, getting flood zones. Like if you ask FEMA, if you call FEMA today and you ask them which properties are at risk of being in flood zones or being flooded, they will tell you every property. Doesn't matter if it's in a flood zone. In 1972 was when they created the flood map panel and they redid their entire rating system uh, just in October of 2021. Because they were like, oops, you know, they were uh, grossly wrong. And how often have you heard of properties that are not in flood zones being flooded? Some of them get hit every couple of years. Oh. When Hurricane Ida happened, I had gotten 40 of my customers were flooded, right? Um, talking about at least like three inches of water and about like ten to $15,000 of damages at least. And only 10 of them were in flood zones. So only 10 of them actually had flood insurance. The other 30 didn't even have flood insurance because they weren't required and they had this impression that, you know, uh, flood's not gonna happen, right? So uh, I put this together just to kind of really emphasize, like it's, it's be, even if you're not in the flood zone, you may want to talk about your flood risks and, and how much it might cost to get flood insurance, right? Um, I go on over to the next track right here, right? So the Grim Reaper, he's actually transitioned, he's no longer, uh working with humans he's working on killing real estate deals that are in flood zones because how often does that happen you get a client that is in a flood zone and you can't find affordable flood insurance like this, right so um that's something that i specialize on so if you have a client and even if you want to know within five minutes i'll tell you all the flood insurance rates what can we do to possibly get the lowest rates possible as well as potentially, can we get that property out of a flood zone? So you don't even have that flood insurance requirement. Um, as well as uh, there's sometimes that if a seller has flood insurance already, that policy could be transferred to your new buyer, right? So like, I'll, I'll, if, you, if you give me an address, I will work on all those things for you in a few minutes to let you know. So you don't get caught up in a transaction for a couple of weeks or a couple of months only to find out later on, oh, the flood insurance is just killing the deal, right? I'll let you know well before you even list the property or before you even show it. Um, all, everything you need to know about flood insurance rates and if you can make that deal happen, right? 
Um, so this is a, a little snip I took. This is from Manville, New Jersey. Back in 2016, the Army Corps of Engineers spent $3 million in Manville, New Jersey to try to see what they could do to try to like prevent the flooding, right? Have, have you guys ever had any instances in Manville, New Jersey? Have you ever worked with lines? I have a deal on the contract right now. Right now, okay. And um, we were looking at two houses and one of them just got flooded like crazy. They had like two feet up into the first floor. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And then the other one, he had flood a while back, but I think this was before they did this, and he redid the redid the whole thing and had like retaining walls and everything. So I know okay. the flooding over there is pretty bad. It, was that property in the flood zone? It's not. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So <laughs> part of like what I, I like, you know, try to take the stigma away from flood insurance, uh, because sometimes you know people will be like, oh, it's in a flood zone, I don't want to buy. But the reality is, almost every property has some kind. of of risk. Uh, the worst situations when people don't are not in a flood zone and they don't buy it, they, they lose so much more money than someone who was in a flood zone and just bought flood insurance, right? Um, so they spent $3 million on doing research. And at the end of it, they just pretty much said, you're on your own, and, right? So um, it's kind of like a growing reality that and when I talk to like buyers, I try to explain to them, like, look, the worst thing you can do is stay rented. Even I, I personally would rather buy in a flood zone and play pay for flood insurance. It's still that much better for themselves to just get put into some property um, and uh, think about how many times people are happy to not buy in a flood zone and then they get flooded and that's 10, 20, $30,000 in damages, right? And FEMA will help you, but they'll make you take out a loan, right? So flood insurance is uh, uh, is a really, really uh, a great solution, right? Even if you're not in a flood zone, um, uh, it's still worth kind of having, right? So I'm gonna go to the next slide. Just talk about some of the changes that are coming up. So currently, if you got an FHA buyer, the only place they can get flood insurance if they're in a flood zone is through the National Flood Insurance Program. But HUD has proposed in November of 2020 for them to start accepting um, private flood insurances also, right? I really hope so. That's the biggest bullshit ever. Yeah, and I mean, the, the private flood insurance is just as good. Crazy. Yeah, but um, also in October 2021, for like two years, the NFIP was re-rating their, uh, their rates, right? And if it wasn't for Hurricane Ida, we would have saw much better rates. They're starting to come down now for the National Flood Insurance Program. Yeah. Like I have done some properties in a flood zone, zone AE, seven, $800 sometimes, right? Uh, not every house is like that, but it's just better when you can have additional uh, uh, houses to choose from. And the biggest thing they changed right here that I highlighted in the yellow, um, this is, this is why the NFIP rates are coming down. Before, if a property had flooded several times, the National Flood Insurance Program would look at all the flooding that has happened in the past and count it in their rate. But going forward, if it's a new purchase, they're not looking at any past floodplains. So that's bringing the rates down. But one thing you want to tell your buyers is if they get um, flooded afterwards, then the NFIP will look at the last 20 years. So they might have been paying $800 a year, but after their first floodplain, it could skyrocket, right? Uh, so it, it, it's great to get in. And even when I look at it on the long scheme of things, I still think it makes sense. I think it was the right thing to do uh, because it leaves open doors for people to get put into those properties. Did you uh, buy in a flood zone? Huh? Did you buy in a flood zone? I've never lived in a flood zone, uh, but I have flooded yeah. seven oh. times. No, 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 listen, <laughs> my house is like, throughout my life, seven times I've had about a foot of, of a flood in my basement and they were always finished, right? And uh, this is before I did insurance, I would go to Home Depot, get the vacuum and pump it out. And then I learned all this stuff. I'm like, wow, I could have just got flood insurance to cover all that stuff, right? So, um, uh, but going down to the next. Right. Now, I have a question. How can you find out how many times, as an agent, how can you find out how many times the house has been flooded? So, if you want to know the actual like claim history, the only way is really through the seller. The seller has to request it through FEMA, right? 
FEMA will only give it to the actual owner of the property with the flood history. However, if you give me an address, right, uh, the, the FEMA has what's called a severe repetitive loss history, and there are, there are properties that are on there that have repeated. So that much I could be able to tell you that, hey, has this property flooded so many times that the NFIP has put them on a list, right? Yeah. Um, uh, that's something like, you know, obviously, that program only flooded once is great, but if it's yeah. something that flooded like 15 times, you know it's going to flood, and then your clients are screwed, and then they're going to, the first thing they're going to say to the agent is, how come you didn't find out about this, and how come you didn't know how many times the house flooded? So yeah, that's why. but I think that's kind of like the, it, it can happen almost yeah. anywhere to anyone now, right? Yeah. Um, and that's kind of an unfair thing to put on the agent, but all the, I can explain but those things. But, it's real estate. Agents yeah. get blamed first. We always get blamed first. No, uh, no, don't worry. Uh, I'll, I'll take that blame off. Uh, all right. Going down to the next screen, right? If you're if you're the one of the biggest factors outside of the flood zones that the property is in depends on the foundation, right? Homes that are above ground, like even if there's an above ground basement or if it's on a concrete slab, those are the least expensive to to, to insure for flood insurance, right? So if you see a property that's in a flood zone and it's above ground, it's like a golden nugget because you know that in that flood zone, it's going to get the best rates versus a house that would maybe completely. And, and it does vary, right? So um, above ground or on a concrete slab is, is always the least expensive. Um, then right after that, homes that have a crawl space are the second least expensive. Walkout basement is pretty much tied right there. And then if it's a split level versus a, a house that's completely below grade, right? A, those are little instances that you want to just make sure that, hey, if you're getting a flood insurance quotes, that the agent knows that, hey, it's a split level. It's not a full because there are it, it, it is less expensive, right? Well, so walk out basement don't really... Yeah, yes. if it's above ground, it's it's rated just like it was a um uh, like on a concrete slab. So when you see a house that's a, above ground and it's in a flood zone, don't get too scared yet. Minus. Yeah, minus the box, minus walkout base from the back. Like but there's a portion of it that's below grade. Exactly. So that still gets rated. Yeah, but it's still. Uh, I, mean, it, it, I got everybody yeah. in my neighborhood got flooded. Though. I didn't get no water. Really? No. Uh, that's great. That's my great. Not, <laughs> but the owner before me, uh -huh. he filled the, the land. But he did something weird, which I never understood until I never came. Yeah, it was like though. I'm above everybody's yard is like down. I was so like, I don't know it's in front of my yard because it's like a grading. Yeah, like this. Uh, and yeah. then he put um and you say that like cement, mm -hmm. there's something that goes like this, and then he goes down. Yeah, yeah that's so great. I felt cheated, like I lost money. You, you, you shouldn't have hey, it worked out well, yeah. 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 He probably had it the previous, right? The previous general probably had it happen so many times. And and like, did they give you an elevation certificate? I'm gonna talk about that next. No? Gotcha. Okay, yeah, because uh, the next thing that I'm gonna start talking about, you'll see but that something like that, even if you have flood insurance, can affect your rates, bring it down because they, they've done good mitigation. Against yeah, it's all right, cool. So uh, this slide right here, um, the the SNP that you see and that this is from, this is what's called a special flood hazard um, area determination, right? So if a property is in a flood zone, it tells you right here on the top right uh, red circle that I have, it tells you what flood zone that the house is in. And if anybody ever needs this, I can get this for you in literally minutes, right? Even if it's just a showing, you want to see the report. And on this report, the, one of the most biggest things you see uh, the, the last red circle, right? BFE. So that is it stands for the base flood elevation. So every flood area that you're in, there is what they when actually, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you in another slide. Um, let me show you the visual for that. So right here, so you see what I highlighted base flood elevation. So every flood zone, they know, hey, the water level is such and such feet, right? 
and every property has one associated with it, but it's not specific to each property, right? So if you have a customer that gets an elevation certificate and you can that's completed by a lift surveyor, they usually cost between like four fifty to seven hundred dollars one time. It will tell you the lowest part of the house. So let's say you're in a flood zone and the like example was 79.8 on the last one, right? So let's say that's the water level of the flood zone that you're in. But maybe your house is actually above that 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 area, right? Um, that can get you out of a flood zone if the house is above that. So that's one quick way of just kind of looking at it, of knowing, hey, what the what the base flood elevation of the flood zone you're in. And an elevation will tell you specifically where that house lies on that flood zone, if it's below or above it. And if it meets it or is above it, you can get the house out of the flood zone. You have to uh, file a LOMA, which is a letter of map amendment with FEMA. Um, I've had a customer do that, and it took about nine months. And uh, but he was able to get the house out of the flood zone. So um, it, it, it does take time, but it's just some value and like opportunity as you're looking at properties. And, and that's some information that you can get even before even putting an offer. Sometimes the sellers already have one and can, you can ask them for it. And you can already kind of know that, hey, look, if I can get this house of a flood zone and I resell it, I'm definitely going to do better than it was currently because now it's already out of the flood zone, right? So, but, yeah. Who submits the LOMA? Is it the owner or a company? Uh, you can, they, they can, the, the owner has to file it with FEMA, oh. right? And they're going to want an elevation certificate uh, to go with it, right? Um, but uh, this form that I'm showing you, I can pull this for any property in the flood zone. So you, we already have some information going in. And if the seller tells you to have an elevation certificate and they never knew that they could do that, well, you kind of already know that, hey, one, that elevation certificate can also help you get much lower rates on flood insurance, um, as well as potentially maybe getting it out of a flood. I'm going to go to the next uh, slide. So this is actually kind of just talked about the base flood elevation, right? So I'm just going to read this part right here. Uh, FEMA uses the most accurate flood hazard information. However, because of their limitations of scale or topographic definition, the maps used to prepare small areas may inadvertently show within a special flood hazard area, even though the property is on natural ground or as above the elevation um, of the 1% annual chance of flood, right? Um, because of this limited extent, the elevated area and the limitations of the map scale it may not have been possible for FEMA to show this area as being outside of the special flood hazard area. So these areas have been incorrectly included in a flood zone. You guys like my little cartoon here? <laughs> Noah, there will be flood and it will destroy all of creation. Don't worry, I have flood insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's on this, right? All right. So this is an example of um, uh, an actual customer that I quoted in the past, right? So this was a customer who didn't, uh, they didn't have an uh, elevation certificate when they first called me, right? And their flood quotes were coming in around, the NFIP was $1,408 and uh, a private quote was coming in at 2705, right? The base flood elevation for their zone was 79.8. That's where the water level was. This is in Union this property, right? I told them to get an elevation certificate. They did, right? And then once they got the elevation certificate, once they got the elevation certificate, um, once they got the elevation certificate, I was able to get the price down to $555 annually, right? Yeah, it, it closed their deal. They got the, the survey done for $450. And, and that made the deal happen, right? Versus, and it also, it also helped the buyer get a lot more reassurance that, oh, okay, I did this and my rate came down. They didn't feel so scared about buying in a flood zone uh, to begin with, right? I'm gonna go back. Uh, and this just kind of talks about 
you know, uh, the most interesting man in the world. I don't always transfer someone's insurance policy to my name, but if I did, it was their flood insurance and it was a sweet rate because uh, insurance companies, they have rating systems. When you're buying it, they're using whatever rating tool they have at the time. So some of these older flood policies, they might have gotten grandfathered into some really good rates. And now with more flooding, the, the rates are generally higher now a lot of times than maybe someone who got it 15 or 20 years ago. And if it is a really good rate, we can transfer it to your new buyer's name. And if that, if that works, I, I've done that like conference calls with um, uh, buyers and the seller and the listing agents sometimes got their flood insurance company on the hold and help them do the whole transfer. So if you guys ever need that, let me know. I'm happy to help. Um, Cool. All right. And also, uh, just to kind of talk again about the differences between slab and basement. So I took this same scenario, the same property, right? So if that property that ended up getting a quote for $555, if it was a basement, the rate would have came out to 4000 for the year, right? But because he was on a slab and also they got the elevation certificate, um, that's why uh, those little instances, whatever the foundation is on, that's the most important thing that you want to make sure your buyer knows if they're shopping around. If you, I do that, but if you, they end up going with somebody else, they want to just make sure, hey, it's a split level or it's on a slab or it's a crawl space. Those things can really make a big difference. So uh, that's the one, one address and the foundation type, most important um, things. All right. Um, and this just talks about right here with Loma, right? Um, so the only thing, it's free to file a Loma, a letter of math amendment. There's, um, they, they can go directly to FEMA, file out the application, attach the elevation certificate, and that's the only thing they have to do um, if they uh, if they did want to file. But again, I'm, I'm here to help you guys if you guys ever have questions or that. Okay. So, uh, this is the example of a customer that was able to get their property out of a flood zone. So right here, this 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 was his property, and he had 560, 565 was the uh, base flood elevation for his property. Right, and this is his letter that he got back from the saying congratulations because he showed his elevation certificate. And uh, his elevation certificate, his was at, was like right at the same exact level. Actually, it was at 0. 0.5 less. It was actually like 0. was five, six inches below the base flood, but FEMA still removed the property out of a flood zone. Right. Um, all right. Go on to the next. All right. So I would have got away with it too if it wasn't for that pesky insurance. <laughs> It's fancy PowerPoint. All right, <laughs> All right guys. So uh, that's my contact information. Again, if you ever if you're going on showings and properties in a in a flood zone, you want to get the any flood information and flood insurance quotes, or you got a listing coming up and you want to know what the flood insurance rates are. So because uh, that can help. Sometimes people shop for flood insurance. They get one or two companies and they, they get scared and they don't want to follow through. I will shop all the carriers. There's only seven in Jersey as of right now, and I have all of them. So I'll tell you off front, hey, what's the best? And all the things that I talked about, I will try to help you guys to make sure we you know. we utilize every single resource so that we make, you know, get your um, buyers the, the, the best deal and your sellers the, the best yeah. asking price. Awesome. Right? Thank you, guys. I'm definitely going to use you. I'm going to see you on the phone as a flood guy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have a listing in Raleigh coming up. It's in the flood zone. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'll get the quotes I'll, I'll, let's get the quotes because I'm going to list it and I'll have the quotes on file. Yeah, buyer. definitely. Get that and let me ask them, because I sold it to them, so they should have the insurance. Let me see what their policy is. Hi, quick question. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so I took a, like, I guess, flood class when I was with Central Jersey's um, MLS, and they said that the rates are going to be increasing for new policies about 18% a year. Is that still the case? 
So in October of 2021, when the National Flood Insurance Program redid their rates, when Ida first happened, yeah, rates were still pretty high, but slowly I've been seeing them come down. Uh, overall, over the last like three, four years, I have been seeing rates come down. And the whole reason they did that map, that map change, their plan was, uh, and this is from the National Flood Insurance Program, their plan was to help reduce rates on average, I think it was like 30 to 40%. Um, for 80% of properties, they said 20% of the houses, they will be going up, but for the other 80% of uh, properties in flood zones, their rates will be coming down. And from what I'm seeing, I think it's, it's, it's going to be getting better slowly, but it's all those things that I kind of talked about, about utilizing, because I can't tell you how many times I've seen someone almost like want to walk away from a deal. Um, and then I've been able to like, maybe find something, or maybe the foundation information wasn't right, or, um, you know, uh, sometimes a neighbor had an elevation certificate, and then they felt confident enough to go buy an elevation certificate themselves for their property, because they knew that, hey, my neighbor was rated the same way in the same type of house, basement, this and that, um, that it makes sense for them, right? Um, but overall, I think flood insurance rates, are, from what I've been seeing also the last six months, I think they're going to be be kind of leveling out or, or, or staying where they are. Okay, thanks. Anybody else? Any other questions? Or? Uh, I need to file all that Loma. All right. On one of my projects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Elevation certificate, I'm above it. So I'm going to file it. Yeah, I'll, 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 yeah look, send me the address okay. and I can start. I'll, I'll send you the elevation certificate. Perfect. Good, man. Uh, uh, would you please, can you please can repeat your name and your phone number? Because in the TV, we can even see your information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so. You got it, George? Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, if it, no, so flood insurance companies will require a, a paid in full home insurance, you can do monthly, but usually the mortgage company, they'll, they usually want the first year paid in full. Uh, sometimes they can pay that closing if the mortgage company allows it, it can be mortgage e-bill. Um, uh, but that's usually the lender discussion. Sometimes we want full policy. What's your email? Uh, yeah, it's a A H S A N at I I Y B I dot com. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Awesome. You know, thank you, brother. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Great info. Uh, great info. Thank you. Bye. Everybody take a picture of the information before, or if not, um, hit them on WhatsApp. He posts on there all the time, so you can uh, hit them there. Have a good one, guys.